Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video, we'll be talking about fractions for nursing math. And what we're doing with these fractions are dividing them, right? And so the goal is to divide the fractions. Before we're dividing them, we're going to reduce them to lowest terms. After we do that, we're going to express the answers to the nearest tenth. So we're going to round these to the nearest tenth after we divide them. Now, there's a few key things that we have to know while we're doing this. The first is, before we divide the fractions, we want to reduce them to the lowest terms. So here we see we have 25,000 over 1 million. And what's common about them, we're going to remove little by little. So here, I'll just rewrite the number to show the step of what's happening. 25,000 uh, over 1 million. And we, here we see they have three zeros in common. So we're going to strike three zeros out with each set, right? And now what we have left is 25 and 100. I mean, and 1,000, not 100. Now, 25 and 1,000 have a lot in common, right? So we know that 25 times 1 gives us 25, and 1,000 is actually a multiple of 25, because um, if we just take up one zero for a second, we know that 4 times 25 is 100, but 40 times 25 would be 1,000. And we could think about this like when going to the laundromat and putting $10 into the machine to get quarters, we get 40 quarters out of it. So here, let's reduce this before we continue multiplying. And we know 40 times 25 over 1 times 25, uh, under 1 times 25, actually. And these 25s are going to reduce out. And we're just left with 1 divided by 40, which is a much easier division to work with, right? And now, when we divide this, we're using the 40 to divide the 1. So here we have 40 divided into 1. And we're going to add two decimal places after this because we're rounding to the nearest tenth position. And the tenth position is this guy right here. So since we're rounding this number up, we're going to need the position next to it to do that. Now 40 doesn't go into 1, so that'll be 0. And 0 times 40 is just 0. That makes 0 here. 1 minus 0 is 1. We bring down the, one, the next term, which is 0. And 40 does not divide 10 because still it's too big. So this is also a 0. And this number here is then just going to become 100, right? So this becomes 10 minus 0 is 10. We bring down the next 0, and we get 100. And 40 goes into 100 basically two times. So that becomes 80. And this division continues. But since we're rounding to the nearest tenth, this solution here, because this is 0 0.2, 0 0.2, actually, this is going to round up to just 0, 0.0, all right? And it rounds up to 0, 0.0 because the hundredth place in this solution is a 2. And since it's less than or equal to, it's less than 5 and not greater or equal to 5, we cannot use this to round the, the tenth position up. So our solution just remains 0, 0.0 for the first one here. And it's fine to get a 0, 0.0 on your solution, you know. For an answer like this, we wouldn't just leave it blank or say there's no solution. We actually say it's 0, 0.0, all right? Now moving on to the next problem, we have 73 divided by 12. Now when we look at, at 7.3, not 73, when we look at these two, we know that we could look at the root number of 7.3, which is 73, and see that 73 and 12 have nothing in common. This 12 has multiples of 2, 6, 4, and 3, and 73 has no multiples that go into it at all. It's basically almost a prime number. Um, without the, with the exception of the decimal point, which makes it harder to see that it's a prime. Right, so here we're just going to divide the 2 to get this solution. So we're using the 12 to divide the 7.3. Again, we're going to go one extra space here because we need the hundredth position to get this uh, answer locked in. So now, here we see 12 doesn't go into 7. We'll just add a 0. And now we'll see if 12 goes into 73, which it does. Now, 12 times 6 is 72. So if you have your calculator next to you and you're using it just to uh, help identify with these calculations, it'll be good. But get used to doing them uh, mentally. Like keep track of what these calculations become because you're going to have to be very good to do this. So seven, 6 times 12, 6 by 2 is 12. Carry the 1 over. 6 by 1 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So that becomes 72. We subtract this. And here we're going to get 1. And the 7s cancel out. So we bring down the 0. And we have a 10 here. Now, 12 cannot divide 10, so that becomes a 0. And we're subtracting the 0 factor. And this is where the problem ends. And because it already gives us 0 0.60, there's nothing to round up. So when we round 0 0.60, we just get 0 0.6. And that's 
rounded to the nearest tenth. Moving on to the third problem here, we see we have another decimal problem. Now speaking of decimals, let's go back to the last problem for a quick second. And we see here we're dividing a decimal number, which is just fine because we can divide anything with a decimal. But when we're dividing with a decimal number, the operation cannot be performed because it's actually a decimal number and we cannot divide with these portions of a number. We have to only divide with a whole number. So in this case, we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by a number that will turn this 0 0.3 into a whole number. And that number we're going to use is going to be 10 because 10 helps our decimal place to shift over one position. So here we're going to do 2 times 10 over 0 0.3 times 10. And this is the same as reducing the fraction. As you saw before, I changed this into a multiplier. If we were increasing the value of 1 over 40 to 1,000, we would multiply both by 25 and 25. In the same way, when we're getting rid of a decimal, we are multiplying by a 10 on the bottom and the top. And this gets rid of the decimal for the bottom, and it also magnifies the problem. But if you look at 10 over 10, that's actually just multiplying by 1. You're not changing the value. So it's perfectly safe to do this. This is 20 over just positive 3. When the decimal moves over one place, we get a 3 on the bottom. And now what we want to do here is divide the fractions out because there's nothing to reduce. 3 is a prime number, and 3 is not a factor of 20, so it cannot divide 20 evenly. So let's start the division process here. We have 20 divided by 3. We're at two decimal places because, again, we need to round this to the nearest tenth. And we need the nearest hundredth position to get that done. All right? So here, 3 doesn't go into 2. That'll be a 0. But 3 does go into 20. 3 goes into 26 times. So this is going to give us 6 times 3 is 18. This subtracts. We get a 2 here. And we're going to bring down the next 0. And that's 20 again. So it's going to give us the same, uh, the same quotient on top for the number. So here, uh, to, make tw to make the closest number to 20 without going over with a 3, it's 6 by that number. Again, it's 18. We subtract and we get a 2 again. And we bring down the next decimal place. And now, again, we get the same number because this is going to be a 20. And 3 goes into 20 again 6 times, which is again 18. And here's where we're going to stop because we have the hundredth position and we need to round this to the nearest tenth here. So we're going to round this number up, and the 6 is greater than 5, so it's 5 or greater. So we're going to round this number up, and we're going to add one digit to this, right? So this is going to become 6.7, and I don't mean one digit as in a position. What I mean is we're going to add just a carryover to this 6 here, and that 6 then becomes a, a 0.7, all right? So this becomes 6.7. Now moving on to the next problem, we have a different problem where we're dividing with a, f a decimal with another decimal in the fraction system. So for this one, I'm going to work it out way over here, all right? Because I have more space over here. So I have 1.3 divided by 0 0.75. And again, we cannot, mul we cannot divide with this decimal number. So what we must do is multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by a number that gets rid of the decimal of the denominator. To get rid of this one, we're going to have to use two position shifts, right? So instead of just having 10, which is a single position shift, we're going to have 100 here, which has two zeros, and it has a double position shift. So we're going to use the same number on top and bottom. 1.3 by 100 here becomes when the decimal moves over two places. For 1.3, we get 1.30. We add the, the placeholder here, so we can shift it twice, and this becomes 130. For the bottom number, 0 0.75, this just becomes 75 when we do the second position move. So here we have 130 divided by 75. And can we reduce the fraction is the question. And the answer to that is yes. We know we can because it ends with a 0 and 5 each number on the numerator and denominator. And numbers that end with 0 and 5 are multiples of 5, right? So how many 5s are in 75? We're dividing each number by 5 independently. And 5 goes into 7 once, and 5 goes into 25 twice, right? So uh, 5 times, actually. So if we want to see this division separately, 5 goes into 75 once, that's 5. We subtract, that becomes a 2, bring down the 5. 5 goes into 25 5 times, that's perfectly 25. And this goes to 0, so there's the 15 for the bottom. For the other number, we have 130 divided by 5. 
So 130 goes here, 5 goes into 1 0 times, 5 goes into 13 twice, that's 10, and 10 minus 13 is 3, we bring down the 0, that's 30, 5 goes into 36 times, and that's 30 perfect. So that becomes 26 as the numerator. Our problem now is that we have this new fraction which is reduced, but the only good part about this problem is that it's now a lot simpler to get to the solution. So we're going to divide 15 going into 26, and we're going to stop at the hundredth position again. So we're going to have 15 dividing the number 26.00, and this will be the last position we divide to. So 15 doesn't go into 2, we just add the 0 over the 2, but 15 does go into 26 one time. And that becomes 15, we subtract, and we get 1 for the 6 minus 5, 1 for the 2 minus 1, we bring down the 0. Now 15, how close can 15 get to 110 without getting over? So we know 15 times 2 is, right, 15 times 1 is 15 by 2 is 30. We're just adding 15 going down this list, right? 15 by 3 is 15 plus 30, which is 45. 15 by 4 is 15 plus 45 is 60 by 5 is 75 by 6 we have 90 by 7 we're gonna have 105 and this is as close as we can get to 110 without getting over we're gonna leave this list just in case we need to use it to do the next division right so here we have 105 that's gonna be seven times for the quotient number we subtract and this becomes a 5 we bring down the 0 and we have 50. Now again, we could just use the same list as a reference. We see 15 by 3 is 45. We know that's going to be the number up here, and the number down here is 45, and we're subtracting again. We can stop the division here because we have the hundredth place, and we're using the 3 to round the 7. And in this case, the 3 doesn't change the 7, it stays the same. So our solution for this is just 1.7. Round it to the nearest 10. All right? Thank you.